Can you believe that I've been doing this show for over four years and I haven't featured a single jungle exploitation movie yet? I know, I can't believe it either. I mean, they've got all the elements that would make them perfect for this show. Senseless violence, senseless nudity, senseless plot lines. Why the fuck haven't I done one yet? Well, I am fixing that right now, because today I am doing my very first jungle exploitation movie. And yes, I'm aware that animated movies won in that poll I had, but don't worry, I'll get to those eventually. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley is a 1985 Italian-Brazilian co-production that in some parts of the world is known as Cannibal Ferox 2, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with that movie. Whatever, the movie's four, and it's pretty much a given that it's gonna have a million different titles. I'm just happy it's not Star Crash 2. And besides, the only word I care about in the title is dinosaur. I mean, a jungle exploitation movie with dinosaurs in it? This movie's gonna be awesome. It also stars Michael Sopkew. My name is Michael Sopkiv. Sorry, sorry, my mistake, Sopkiv. You may remember him as not Snake Plissken from 2019 after the fall of New York, where he spent the better part of the movie getting beaten up and captured. And you know what else? He kicked George Ironmaster Eastman's ass in Lumberto Bava's first blood exploitation awesome fest, Blast Fighter. You'd know that if you knew anything about anything. Motherfucker. Why is it so easy for people to hack into my videos? Anyway, we begin with a bus traveling through the Amazon jungle. Hmm, well, I don't know anything about this massacre, but judging by the music, it sounds delightful. The passengers don't seem very excited, though. Even Brazilian John Landis here looks unhappy. This is Professor Ibanez, who's trying to make his way to the Valley of the Dinosaurs. I sure hope their hotel is better than their bus ride. Bon dia, and welcome to our modest hotel. I'll say it's modest. The indoor pool sign was actually referring to this. And that's not the only problem. Professor, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid we don't have two single rooms available. How is that? Didn't you receive the letter I sent? I had another bed moved into your room. That way the young lady could stay with you. <laughs> I'm happy with that arrangement. He's my father. She said that to make this guy feel awkward, but I think it just made his boner even bigger. Also, Ibanya says he sent this guy a letter, so did he just not say his daughter was coming with him? I also asked you to reserve two seats for us on the plane back to Manaus. I hope you're not going to tell me the plane's full as well. Actually, I booked you one seat so the lady could sit on your lap. In hindsight, that was a bad decision, but you really should have told me she was your daughter in your letter. This hotel must be pretty happening, since it not only has every stereotypical tourist all rolled into one here, but hot models, too. He's a photographer from Sao Paulo, and the two girls are models. He says he worked for a fashion magazine. If you ask me, I'll bet it's a sex one. Well, either way, he looks like he considers cocaine to be part of a complete breakfast. It's at this point we see the sop man, and I'm really hoping those bananas aren't how he was paid for this movie. Be careful, I worked a year for what's in there, easy! Sopkeev plays Kevin Hall, a bone hunter who also wants to go to the Valley of the Dinosaurs. Although if he's hunting bones, I think the shotgun's kinda overkill. They're already dead, dude! I just want a room. No, 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 there's nothing. I can pay with my credit card, American Express. Uh, yeah, this may be a seedy hotel in the middle of the Amazon, but you're still gonna need at least a MasterCard, pal. Meanwhile, it looks like the photographer's busy taking shots for his cannibal holocaust issue, and Brazilian Bennett the Sage here should really consider going back to reviewing anime. Oh, and in case you're wondering what this scene does to advance the plot, it's very important in establishing that these girls have both tits and asses. Anything happening back at the hotel? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling this is how they finance this movie? And when did Lou Reed and clown Marilyn Monroe get here? Not burned out like you, Captain Hines. I should say, ex-captain. My ex-lover and ex-husband. Yeah, that's you. But if you need somebody to spout awkward exposition lines, that's me. When you've got enough strength in you to finally make it in bed, let me know. Well, lady, maybe if you actually looked like Marilyn Monroe instead of Jocelyn Wildenstein, he wouldn't have trouble getting a boner. 
Anyway, Kevin overhears that a plane is going to the Valley of the Dinosaurs. The Valley of the Dinosaurs? Oh yes, I've heard Silver of it. Silver Plains, though your voice one is not allowed to visit it. It's a reservation for the Aquara Indians. Wait, why would they put Native Americans on a reserve with dinosaurs in it? It's filled with fossils and the tracks of dinosaurs that lived there millions of years ago. Millions of years ago? Oh, there's no dinosaurs in this movie, is there? <laughs> God damn it. Great, not only does this movie lie about being a sequel, even its real title is misleading. Why do so many movies lie about having dinosaurs in them? At this point, the movie remembers it's an exploitation film and has something sleazy happen. <laughs> Hell, you son of a bitch, stay out of this! I'll show you! Nice job, Kevin. You sure showed that four-foot-nothing creep who's boss. Gringo. That's my brother you hit. Uh-huh. Sure he is. And where the hell did these baby-oiled bodybuilders come from? In my 2019 review, I complained that Sopkeep's character got beat up a lot, but let's see how he does here. Ah! Ah! ah Michael Sopkeep. Kicking ass as usual. Here, let me add a little dignity to this scene. Well, Kevin may have gotten his ass kicked, but fortunately for him, he's in a movie where this still gets him the girl. I didn't have a chance to thank you before. Oh boy, I sure hope somebody kicks my ass tomorrow. Okay, I swear to God I didn't add that music there. That's really what they use on the soundtrack for the sex scene. Although, I suppose it could always be worse. That's our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Saving women from getting creeped on, and then immediately creeping on women. And you better explain what you're doing in my room. I'm pleased to meet you, Professor. I've read all your books. Dynamics of Evolution, Paleozoic Epistemology, and On the Trail of the Last Dinosaurs. Weird, I thought Richard Boone was on the trail of the last dinosaur. Kevin convinces the professor to let him come to the Valley of the Dinosaurs with them by, well, pretty much just asking nicely. If it depended on me, Father, I'd refuse him. But Ava, my dear, how can I possibly refuse the one person in this whole world who's read all my books? I don't know, because he snuck into your room and spied on your daughter taking a shower? That's a pretty good reason. Too late, he's already coming with. It's the land of the Aquata. They're also headhunters, they still practice it. But what's more, some of them are cannibals besides. Don't worry though, as long as nothing goes wrong with the plane, we'll be fine. Uh, oh, hopefully I didn't jinx us by saying that. But oh no, they run into deadly, um, clouds? I'm not really sure what happens here. The plane starts to crash, but I don't know if it's because of turbulence or just plot convenience. We should never have flown in here. I'm afraid we're going to crash. You gonna try to land? Nah, I was just thinking about letting us crash. Yes, I'm gonna try and land, you idiot! It's a good thing the pilot was able to turn the plane into a toy and land in that puddle. Otherwise, the crash could have been really bad. It's that. Ha! Huh. Yeah, I think this guy's just shocked that blood's coming from someplace other than his nose. And this was a really uneven crash, since the passengers range everywhere from dead to perfectly fine. We're all gonna be killed. We're all gonna die here. We're all gonna die! As long as you're next, I'm okay with that. Looks like it's time for Kevin to take control of the situation. Or whatever, just have this guy do it. I'll get us out, don't worry. Hell, I did three tours in them. They weren't during the war, but still, you get the idea. This is Captain Heinz, and I'm sure he'll be a fine leader. Everybody's gonna be all right, as long as they obey my orders. This isn't Vietnam. This is the Amazon jungle. So right Indians instead of gooks. Just give me a jungle and you can be damn sure I can make racist comments in it. Heinz may not be very politically correct, but I think he might be psychic. We'll stay here. There's no reason to now. The professor just died. <laughs> Uh, you said that before he died, but whatever, this jungle isn't gonna walk through itself. Okay, seriously, what's with the music? Are they trekking through the jungle or doing an 80s training montage? The valley may not have dinosaurs, but it does have leeches. Come on, it's only a leech. 
Ooh, he spied on me naked and he eats leeches? This guy is a charmer. I'm guessing this was supposed to show how tough Kevin is, which might have worked if we hadn't already seen this. <laughs> These people have bigger problems to worry about, though. It looks like Eli Roth shooting a movie here. Oh, thank God, it's just the headhunters. Make a sound or we'll all die. Hey, you don't know that. Maybe they'll just kill her. They managed to escape the headhunters, or do they? I've heard that chanting before. Bonnaroo 2012. We formed a drum circle just after Fish took the stage. At night, I can still smell the patchouli in my nightmares. Where the hell did you learn so much about these bloodthirsty bastards? You shack up with one? No, not exactly. But... In another weird plot development, Kevin says he spent time among the tribes here, but if he was able to survive among them without getting killed, why doesn't he just use his knowledge to get the Aquara to leave them alone? The river's the only possibility we have of getting out of here in one piece. I hate to admit it, but he's right. Heinz may be in charge, but there's still a way for Kevin to prove he's tough to Eva. Okay, so that may not have been very dramatic, but at least they didn't actually kill that snake on screen, which puts this movie way above most other jungle exploitation films. In addition to animal cruelty, there's another thing Kevin won't stand for, and that's somebody perving on women that isn't him. Time to show this guy who's boss. Just shut your mouth and follow orders. You're a bloody fool. You can take your orders and shove them. Wow, that's an impressive skill. Kevin's able to get his ass kicked without somebody even touching him. But hey, good, bad, he's the one with the gun. And can you guess what happens next? That's right, more walking. Okay, movie, I accept that there's no dinosaurs, but is there at least some conflict in this valley? Ha! 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 Quick, get out of the water! Come on, get out! Yeah, or at least stand up. You're in like six inches of water. <laughs> this guy's leg looks pretty bad, but I'm pretty sure Kevin holding it up for no reason probably isn't helping. <laughs> hmm, you know, I'm starting to think Heinz is kind of a dick. Well, that does it, Heinz. Time for Kevin to show everybody who the real tough guy is. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, I guess you did your best, Kevin. It's not your fault your best just happens to suck. And I really hope he didn't get his ass kicked in the hopes this would get him laid afterwards. <laughs> oh, danger! Oh. You know, for a guy who was supposedly able to survive in the jungle with the Aquara, it really seems like the only reason he's not dead yet is due to dumb luck. He'd be totally screwed at this point if Heinz didn't conveniently forget that they had a shotgun with them. Which reminds me, why the hell didn't you shoot Heinz after they started fighting? The girls get captured by the Aquara, and these two learn that in the jungle, karma can be a bitch. John, help me! <laughs> Christ. You bastard. Okay, you're still an asshole for killing that guy, but in this case, I think you made the right decision. Not that you'll get much farther than her. Where are you hiding, gooks? Come on out, come out! Goddamn gooks! Heinz, please, it's Indios. If you're gonna be racist, at least have the decency to get it right. At least now I know why this guy's called Heinz. It's because he's filled with delicious ketchup. <sighs> Oh, and take a good look, people, because this is the closest we get to any dinosaurs in this movie. At the Aquara Village, it looks like the tribal cousin It is preparing to sacrifice the girls. Also, the Aquara have apparently mastered the art of camera tricks. I really wish I could say this is the most half-assed dinosaur I've seen on this show, but it's not. Kevin scares the natives by lighting some gunpowder on fire, although I don't know why he didn't just start shooting, since that's what he does immediately afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good, but I think we know how a real badass would handle this situation. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. This is my boomstick! Kevin rescues the girls, and I will give Michael Sopkeev this. It looks like he allowed those extras to really shoot arrows at him. We're all right. It's all over now. Oh, great. Now you jinxed it. 
Kevin, look! Well, the Aquara may still be after them, but at least Kevin put the girls at ease by going topless, too. Okay, be careful, everybody. We don't want to accidentally wander onto the set of Anaconda. And enough of this boat. Time for more walking. Say, do you think we'll ever get out of here alive, Kevin? Yes, do we have a chance, Kevin? I really don't know. Kevin Hall, a great fighter and reassuring. Kevin goes off into the jungle for some alone time with Eva, so maybe getting beat up really does help him get laid. My god, look at that. What is it? It's a dinosaur's footprint. Oh, quit teasing me, movie. I know there's no dinosaurs in this thing. And I'm starting to question Kevin's knowledge of dinosaurs. And why did they simply die out? Well, let's believe the Ice Age did him in. No one thinks that. You're a shitty paleontologist, Kevin. Also, it looks like the Dos Equis guy spent the 80s as a South American slave trader. Don't worry about them, they're just slaves. Now then, what would a couple of youngsters like you be doing around here? Our plane crashed in the valley there. Can you help us back to a civilized place? I mean, you're a jungle slave owner, so you gotta be trustworthy, right? Fatso here is China, or... China? I don't know, they kind of go back and forth in the pronunciation. China's here! You looking for me, China? Anyway, he may be a slave trader, but at least he knows how to make somebody feel at home. That is, if your home is a prison camp. Now then, I want you to feel like you're in your own home. You're amongst friends here. Well, friends and slaves, but you get the idea. First, the girls need clothes. Well, I, uh... I rather like the way they're dressed. I'm beginning to regret we met this morning. You're just saying that to the jungle slave owner now? China's in the jungle mining for precious stones using slave labor, and when he makes it clear he wants the girls to service his men, Kevin decides to take control of the situation. Kevin! Oh man, I keep setting him up, and he keeps getting knocked the fuck down. Well, Kevin may have gotten his ass kicked again, but at least he still has his verbal wit. I know what you are. You're a fat, smelly, evil bastard. And you're a duty head, too! Look on the bright side, Kevin. All this humiliation means you'll probably get some action later. Before that, though, we get a lesbian sex scene, because come on, it's an 80s exploitation movie. You didn't think we wouldn't get one of those, did you? Okay, the music's a little more appropriate here, but allow me to fix that. Belinda gets shot trying to make a break for it, although it probably would have helped if she actually ran instead of just lightly trotting. <laughs> Gina, I'm gonna kill you! Or at least let you beat me up! Kevin manages to escape later that night, mainly because... Pigs apparently like the taste of rope? You see what I mean about dumb luck being this guy's best friend? Okay, I joke about Kevin's competence, but this time, I'm sure he's got a plan. You looking for me, Chino? Crazy fool, you don't have a gun, you don't stand a chance! That's what you think. You got six shots, Chino! Okay, great, you made some spears. You know what would have really worked well, though? If you didn't blow your cover by talking to him and instead use the element of surprise to actually hit him with the damn spear! Go on, fire! Ah! Uh, running, running, running! Kevin says China only has six shots, which is really assuming he doesn't know what reloading is. Besides, he may not even have to. Hey, you weren't actually supposed to hit me! No fair! Try this one, sucker! Wait, so your plan wasn't to just hit him with the spear, it was to lure him close enough to you so that you could throw a snake at him. I think you might have overthought this plan a little bit there, Kevin. Oh well, I guess it ends up working. Although, did Sheena's guards all take a piss break at the same time? Where the hell are they? Kevin frees the slaves, only for them to immediately be killed by Sheena's guards. Yeah, our hero, ladies and gentlemen. He does end up killing the guards using the Wily e. Coyote method, although I think he could have done that without having the slaves killed. Just saying. And that's good timing. Their ride's here. Jesus Christ. What the? Hey, come on! Sorry, pal. There's only room for one shirtless asshole in this movie. I'm beginning to fall in love with you, Kevin. But then again, I do have terrible taste in men. 
Well, it looks like Eva's over her father dying earlier. Normally I'd end the movie with a joke, but I'll let the movie do that. Kevin, couldn't you try and fly this thing in a straight line? I am flying in a straight line. No, you're not. It's swaying from side to side. Well, it's a Brazilian helicopter. What does that mean? It's got built-in rhythm. No. <laughs> so there you go. The very first jungle exploitation movie featured on this show. So was it one worth spotlighting? This one may not be as infamous as movies like Cannibal Holocaust, but it's got all the basic elements a jungle exploitation movie needs. Violence, nudity, cannibals. Also, unlike a lot of other jungle exploitation films, this one doesn't have real animals getting killed. Well, mostly anyway. Which makes it a lot easier to watch than most of those other movies I mentioned. But there is one thing this movie doesn't have, which is dinosaurs. Seriously, I don't care how many spare dinosaur bone props you have lying around. If you don't have dinosaurs in your movie, don't put the word dinosaur in the title. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.